Hello everybody, uh, today I was going to talk a little bit about Fiji. Um, I was thinking about visiting there and just wanted to do a lot of research about uh, Fiji. I've been studying it for the past year or more. Um, and basically, it's a pretty hard country to find. Uh, when you think about all of Southeast Asia, uh, basically Indonesia here, uh, Papua New Guinea, um, you still haven't found it, uh, Philippines, uh, Hunan Island, well, Sri Lanka, we're kind of going the wrong direction. Actually, Fiji is all the way over on this side here. So it's pretty far away from everything. Uh, and it's basically the last frontier in a lot of respects of the entire east uh, and far east. So it's the furthest east of east that you can possibly get. So when you talk about far east in terms of China, um, yeah, but it's really far east here. Um, almost to the point of being uh, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean like Hawaii but basically there's some very mysterious islands all in here and we're going to talk about them in some detail here. So what exactly is going on here? We have a mysterious boot kind of kicking the island of Fiji off the planet um, and somewhere out here maybe even into Hawaii or even in back up into the North Pole. So it's a very mysterious thing that's going on here. This is the uh, perhaps the most uh, volcanic uh, area in the world, uh, second to maybe the center of the Ring of Fire, which is basically like Indonesia area. Um, but when you see these uh, earthquakes, when I zoom in here, you're going to see just how significant um, the earthquake presence is here. So basically right there is where you can start to see the extent of all the earthquakes. And we're basically losing about a few hundred thousand earthquakes uh, back to the 1960s almost. One of the reasons I like Fiji is that it's not actually right on the earthquake ring. Uh, some of these places are actually very close to where the earthquakes are currently happening. Um, yes, this is very close to where they're happening, but they're not happening right on uh, the island of Fiji. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you Fiji here in a second. So here's the uh, New Zealand boot, as you can see, and we've kind of looked at uh, Australia over here um, on this side. And then we got uh, some other mysterious islands, uh, New Caledonia, and Solomon Islands and then we have it kind of in the center of this whole action uh, with all these earthquakes is this Fiji swirl um, heading back here and we'll see a lot of interesting cloud patterns if I were to zoom out you'll see that there's almost always clouds over Fiji and there you go you saw it just for today um, but the cloud patterns do actually flow a lot of ways along these earthquake lines um, you'll still see a lot of that happening um, and even when there's a volcanic explosion, like a volcano exploding, you'll see a lot of clouds right above the volcano uh, as well. So that's uh, kind of a common occurrence. So on this map, it's a little bit easier to see, but it moves so slowly, so I'm really sorry about this. Um, but uh, it's a little bit easier to see all the earthquake action here. So you can see New Caledonia is actually quite safe, uh, probably the most safe um, of all these areas. Um, but Fiji actually here um, is quite... Uh, Quite impressively centered on what's going on here. And then the deepest earthquake, so these are 500 to almost 1,000 meters into the earth. So very deep, and then 300 to 500 is purple. And then you got green, and then you got blue, and yellow, and then orange near the surface. So uh, basically, uh, some of these very deep earthquakes are basically coming up from uh, around the Fiji area. You can see it's kind of like this one is a fairly recent one. I think it was 19, uh, 2009. So that's kind of a little bit of a worrisome thing. So I would say be careful uh, about staying in a large hotel if you're going to stay in Fiji. It's probably maybe beneficial to stay in a smaller building that will not fall on you uh, if there is a big earthquake. Um, but they don't happen too often. As you can see, that was a 2009. Um, but still, some of these other ones, you can see this is near Suva. And that's 1953, so that's also a pretty old one. Um, but this one here, this is 2018, so that's very recently. Um, so let me just check out a couple others. This is a 7.0, so might as well check it out. And that's 1986. So, But this one was a pretty recent one in the last few years, so that's a, almost an 8.0. So that's a very, very heavy earthquake. Um, definitely uh, something to be thought, thought about. 
So believe it or not, Fiji is composed of almost 300, 330 islands. Um, so this is kind of a topographical map of the area. And you can see there's quite a lot. Now the capital down here, uh, Suva is on this side. There's actually another city called Nadi on this side. It's not showing on the map. Um, but you can kind of go through these things. Now, uh, in terms of religion, um, it is primarily Christian there. There is quite a lot of Hindus there, so you'll be really surprised to see how many Hindus and even how many Muslims are there. And then Sikhs and others are none. So basically, there is a lot of Hindus there on the island. Um, and then in terms of travelers, well, actually, uh, United States, there's quite a lot of people from the United States and China, third most, New Zealand and Australia. So Australia really is getting a lot of people from going over to Fiji. So you might even fly to Australia and then go there or fly from New Zealand. And here's kind of showing the overall traffic map so you can see Fiji's out in here. And yes, definitely you can fly to Australia pretty cheaply. So on the flight thing, you can basically see two major international airports. Uh, Suva and Nadi uh, and actually they're both pretty interesting um, I would say Suva is probably uh, maybe where most people would want to go um, so I'm just gonna look at that one I actually like Nadi a lot so I was thinking of actually flying there um, so I'm gonna just do the explore option here and then I'm gonna choose a uh, round trip but we're gonna do one way just to see the prices so you can see one-way prices um, so basically you can see uh, $37 across the island, which is very affordable. Might as even take that as a bus across the island. Might be fun to do that. Uh, and then you can see uh, Sydney is being a pretty affordable option and Brisbane. I actually really like Brisbane too um, in Australia. So that's a nice little good coral reefs are off of Brisbane. So that's an interesting option. So from San Francisco or New York, you're basically talking about $1,000 to get to Fiji. So it is pretty pricey. Um, even in uh, Asia, the tickets are pretty expensive. Like let's see Mumbai, so that's about $700. So you're basically talking seven, eight hundred, $900. Let's just say $900 one way uh, to get to Fiji. On this map, you can see both of them. I kind of highlighted Nadi on the left there. Um, so you can fly into Nadi here, or you can fly to Suva and then take another airplane over to here, um, to this island. But there's basically two main islands. This is the main island that most people spend their time on. So the interesting thing is that the prices uh, for the flights were a lot from Southeast Asia. So you saw the Singapore flight um, was pretty affordable. Uh, you know so but basically this is how the migration pattern went um, there's a great page on Wikipedia that you might want to check out um, and take a look at so next I'm gonna go into a lot of details about Fiji so basically here's the overall flight map um, basically the passports so you can get in their visa free access to Fiji these are all the countries that you can go visa free so you can go to New Zealand uh, Australia, most of South Africa, most of Latin America is now visa free, which is great. And then Europe is also visa free, which is awesome. So I want to look at a couple of the weird ideas about why someone might want to go to Fiji. It's really far out there. There is kind of a mysterious triangle in this region. This is Southeast Asia, Indonesia. Um, it turns out my grandpa and my mom was actually born in Jakarta, Indonesia. I know I look white, but basically my mom was born uh, in Indonesia. Um, and basically uh, they were they witnessed the Krakatoa explosion here, um, which is a giant explosion. So, um, but this is on the opposite side. So Fiji's actually way, way over here. In fact, that's probably Fiji right there on that little dot there. So, um, but basically there's a whole lot of other things connected to it. Uh, spiritually so you'd have to kind of understand how that's all connected um, and then here you can see basically this is the what I'm calling the capital off Antarctica um, and, and basically there's India that points here and then the mysterious island of Sri Lanka and there's also this other island off the coast of Africa so there's a lot of weird uh, mysterious islands out there um, but Fiji is definitely one of them here's some other islands that you might look into uh, if you're interested in Fiji and, and then basically this weird idea of like how does uh, the island connect with the earthquakes. So here you can see Fiji is probably like right in here um, and basically these earthquakes all kind of culminate right over here and there's actually a live earthquake map that's slightly different. This is all the earthquakes that there's almost ever been since the 1960s on a USGS map so it's not actually what's going on right now today. So sometimes these earthquakes do shift quite a bit from where the historical lines have been.
And here's kind of looking at some details about how those shifts might act, actually happen. Um, like right now, what we're seeing is this big boot kind of coming back over here into Papua New Guinea, another very mysterious island. Um, this is Papua New Guinea right here. So basically, that's kind of a mysterious question about how all these earthquakes are connected. Um, even over the Ring of Fire even makes it over to the United States. And then here's some other earthquake examples in Southeast Asia. You can see basically the Himalayas are basically part of this massive earthquake zone. And then heading up to the North Pole, this is all the earthquakes there. And then further, so here's here is Fiji out here, right? Uh, and then basically heading out to the other parts of the Earth. And again, there's some serious explosive action from Fiji that we all know about from these earthquakes. So we can see that there's quite a extraordinary presence of earthquakes. And then each one of these earthquake zones probably has different meanings, both logically and spiritually. So there's basically all these earthquakes happening. This is more of a live map. So you see on a live map, there's actually quite a lot of earthquakes happening here um, quite recently. And then here's kind of a weird default zone right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. You can see how it kind of splits into a Y pattern. Uh, but really what I wanted to get into is what I'm calling the seeds of Earth. So here we have some mysterious uh, in between Hawaii and Fiji, there's also some other islands that you may want to check out um, and kind of discover. So these are some three very mysterious islands I was noticing. And you almost can never get to access to these because they're so far away from everything. Um, but they're really cool pictures to see what these islands looks like uh, from the satellite imagery. So there's just some extraordinary um, untouched lands all in here that would be very interesting to look at. So here you can see how these are starting to connect. Now this this is uh, basically Tahiti and also uh, American Samosa uh, out in this region here. And you can actually go there as an American, which is pretty interesting. Then this is actually Easter Island. There's these two mysterious um, places that are really interconnected and strange on our planet. And then more of the, this weird kind of like acrobatics thing happening in the middle of the ocean. And then the islands again. And then here now we have Fiji kind of being kicked off here. And then it's Samosa here, um, Tonga, and Fiji. And then here's another image of Fiji showing. And you can just see how this is just coming up like this really amazingly into Fiji. So there's just so many interesting maps looking at how Fiji is. And here's more of that boot image that we looked at before. And then a really close detail up. Now these are live, these are live earthquakes within the last 30 days. So we don't see a lot of earthquakes within the last 30 days close to the island, but this is still, um, you know, 100 miles away, which is pretty close. And then this is all the earthquakes since the 1960s or 50s. And then more of the zoomed in pictures of Fiji. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed the study of Fiji. Let me know what ideas you have. Um, I'd be glad to talk with you about more details. Uh, again, I'll just go through all these pictures really quick so you can see everything that we've been talking about. So again, a lot of these are really deep into the Pacific Ocean. This is called the Seeds of Earth that we were looking at. Um, and then more of this whole details. A lot of this is USGS imagery. You can see up in the upper left-hand corner if you want to get the USGS. Um, earthquake maps you can grab this for yourself and take a look at the details and then I left in the do bottom right hand corner where the locations are so you can see GPS locations if you need anyway I hope you really enjoyed the study there's so many different images to look at of Fiji and I really hope that we can talk about it more see you later thanks